Israel's Prime Minister arrives in the UAE following the two countries' FTA deal, and Egypt's inflation accelerates to 13.5 percent. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Israel's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett landed in the UAE today for talks with President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan following a free trade deal signed last month. It's Bennett's second visit to the UAE since the country's normalized relations in 2020. The FTA is Israel's first with an Arab state. The deal abolished customs duties on 95% of products exchanged between the two sides. Israeli figures show two-way trade last year totaled $900 million. Egypt's annual urban consumer inflation accelerated to 13.5 percent year-on-year in May, up from 13.1 percent in April. The inflation could impact the central bank's monetary policy committee when it meets on June 23rd. Citing rising inflation, the committee raised its interest rates by 200 basis points at its last meeting on May 19th. Monthly inflation at 1.1 percent is largely impacted by the cost of foods. Abu Dhabi Fund ADQ has launched a 100 million dollar tech-focused VC fund in partnership with Jordan's Ministry of Digital Economy and Entrepreneurship. The fund will support high-growth tech firms within Jordan's digital economy and deliver sustainable financial returns to the UAE and its partners. The fund will be dedicated to tech startups and innovation-led firms across several industries. Asia markets ended the day on a low note following last night's drop on Wall Street as fears about inflation offset optimism about the outlook for Chinese tech firms. The Hang Seng fell 0.66 percent, the Shanghai Composite lost 0.76 percent and the Shenzhen Composite dropped 1.81 percent. Just as the world watched Shanghai open up, it announced today it will carry out mass testing for COVID-19 in seven districts over the weekend. Shanghai, a city of 25 million people, has a total of 16 districts. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest winner today once again is Zara Fashion's Amancio Ortega, up $3.5 billion with net wealth of $62.8 billion. Our second biggest winner today is Tencent's Mahua Tang, up $2.6 billion with net wealth of $41.8 billion. And our third place winner is Elon Musk, up $2.1 billion with net wealth of $222.1 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. And staying with Musk, his car maker sold over 32,000 China-made vehicles in May, including more than 22,000 for export. The China Passenger Car Association says this compares with less than 1,200 vehicles sold in April. The Tesla factory stopped work for 22 days beginning late March to comply with the citywide lockdown in Shanghai. The plant reopened on April 19th and resumed exports on May 11th, but has struggled to get production back to pre-lockdown levels. Global air cargo markets saw a drop in demand and a contraction in capacity for April. IATA figures show global demand fell 11.2 percent compared to April 2021 and capacity was 2 percent lower. The Ukraine war had a huge impact as several airlines based in Russia and Ukraine were key cargo players. The combination of the war in Ukraine and COVID-19 lockdowns in China have pushed up energy costs, intensified supply chain disruptions and fed inflation. Disney Plus has launched its streaming service in the MENA. It's gone live in 16 Arab countries and says it's tailoring content for the region, including offering Arabic subtitles on most offerings, particularly popular content. Netflix currently leads in the region with more than 6.8 million subscribers. Stars Play, an Abu Dhabi-based competitor, ranks second with just under 2 million, followed by Amazon with 1.4 million subscribers. Some competitors offer original Arabic content like Netflix series Al Rawabi School for Girls and Finding Ola. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.